Ali Azira, 4th of January 2024, Asia's pro-China tipping point is the elections in Bangladesh. China is employing divide and conquer strategies to attempt to influence and control every nation surrounding India's periphery as part of an all-out war against the Indian subcontinent. Important elections to select democratic governments worldwide will take place in 2024, the season starts on January 7 with the election in Bangladesh. There will be 29 political parties competing in the elections, including the ruling Awami League. Al, and a branch of the opposition Jatia Party. Al will inevitably win a fourth term in office since nearly all opposition parties, including the Jamaati Islami, Jamaat, and the Bangladesh Nationalist Party, BNP, would remain silent. Bangladesh's general elections have always piqued international interest. However, this time around, the stakes are higher due to specific geopolitical considerations at play. Before the opposition parties entered the contest, the AL government was pressured by nations like the US and India and international organizations like the EU to ensure that the elections appeared fair by administrative action, backroom diplomacy, and rhetoric. China and Russia counterbalanced this by advising others, including the US, to stay out of Bangladesh's domestic affairs. The geopolitics at work in South Asia are made clear by the polarization of world powers. Who rules Bangladesh is vital to these countries. It is a question of who stands to gain from the current quo and who stands to gain if Al is voted out of office. Hegemonic China adopting stances antagonistic to the globalized world. The US has already made up its mind by the end of 2021. Secretary of State Antony Blinken sanctioned two Bangladeshi security personnel, Benasir Ahmed and Miftauddin Ahmed, for alleged extrajudicial killings in a press statement on December 10 of that year. As a result, they were both barred from entering the U.S., as was their immediate family. Benasir Ahmed, the head of Bangladesh's elite rapid action battalion, RAB, and five other officers were also placed in the global Magnitsky sanctions program by the Department of the Treasury due to grave violations of human rights. The U.S. government implemented a visa policy in May 2023 that prohibited visas for anybody involved in efforts to undermine the democratic election process. The U.S. declared in September 2023 that it was moving forward with the new visa regulations. The U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for South and Central Asian Affairs, Donald Liu, wrote to the leaders of the three main parties, the All Progressives, the BNP, and the Jatia Party, on November 13, 2023, urging dialogue without preconditions. The smiling photos of U.S. President Joe Biden and Bangladeshi Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina at the September G20 summit in New Delhi don't seem to have resulted in a more lenient U.S. stance toward the government of Bangladesh, which is linked with the Alliance for Liberation. It was usual for the BNP and the AL to solicit support ahead of previous elections from major nations like India, and this time was no different. A five-member AL delegation headed by Agriculture Minister Mohammad Abdur Razak visited New Delhi in August 2023. It made the case that the AL's re-election was necessary to maintain stability in the South Asian region. The delegation met with senior Indian ministers and the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party BJP, members. The talking points used by the AL were well known. They combined inciting fear about the political Islamist leanings of the BNP Jamaat connect with assurances that Dhaka would not overlook New Delhi's concerns about Beijing, that China was more of a development partner than a strategic one, that Bangladesh would not forget the hostile role that China and the US played against the country's liberation struggle in 1971, and that India was the friend who assisted the government in achieving independence. China and India have responded to the elections in Bangladesh with more moderation than the US and its Western allies. China has pledged to support the Bangladeshi government in its fight against outside meddling, but India feels that applying too much pressure may bolster extreme elements within Bangladesh's opposition parties. 
divide and rule is the strategic calculation used by the Chinese. The Chinese have recognized opportunities to keep the Al government in place. China has increased influence at several levels in Bangladesh's and the Al's decision-making architecture since 2010. Like with Burma and Cambodia, Beijing is under tremendous strategic pressure to make Bangladesh a state that is primarily dependent on it. Bypassing the Malacca Strait and utilizing the China-Myanmar Economic Corridor CMEC, which connects Yunnan province to the seaport city of Kyaukpu in Myanmar's Rakhine state, this will facilitate Chinese access to Indian Ocean sea lanes. Geographically, the shortest land route from mainland China to the sea lanes is found in the Ganga Padma Brahmaputra Delta. To assist the East India Company's opium and tea trade with China, the British established Calcutta, now known as Kolkata, a part of undivided Bengal, as their transshipment station. As things stand, having Al in charge will guarantee a stable, predictable, and advantageous political environment to safeguard and advance China's significant infrastructure investments in Bangladesh. The Transformation of Bangladesh Concerns should be expressed in both New Delhi and Washington over Al's transformation from a mass-based party of middle-class, secular, pro-Indian leaders allied with the spirit of the 1971 liberation fight to a party led by oligarchs financed by China, some of whom have questionable backgrounds. Hasina's principal advisor, Salman Rahman, is criticized for allegedly running the administration. Big Zimco, a major textile company in Asia with substantial economic dealings with China, is owned by Rahman's family. Similarly, Zunaid Ahmed Palak, a lawyer and state minister for information and communication technology, has come under fire for allegedly being too lenient toward Chinese corporations in his capacity. It's not that oligarchic interests are exclusive to the AL as a ruling party. For example, oligarchs linked to Prime Minister Narendra Modi in neighboring India likewise advance their interests while disguising them as national interests, influencing and directing internal and foreign policy. Geopolitical challenges such as cross-border infrastructure, disaster and pandemic response, and wars offer forums that enable unseen individuals in grey suits to collaborate while dividing up regions for cross-border commercial exploitation. The United States attempt to thwart this transformation by utilizing human rights as a diplomatic tool seems to have backfired since Al is expected to maintain its hold on Bangladesh. In plainer terms, the results of the elections signal the moment when Bangladesh would more fully embrace China's Belt and Road Initiative than the US-backed Indo-Pacific initiatives to challenge Beijing. This is easier said than done in light of increased protests and street violence. Bangladesh, like many other nations in the Indian Ocean Rim Association and South Asia, could not be equipped to handle the change when China becomes a strategic partner rather than a development partner. Not only is the vote on January 7 crucial for Bangladesh, the region, and the world's superpowers, but also what occurs following the poll, 